let's talk about all the ways I customize my MacBook and all of the apps that have my days flow better. Straight into it, first things first, my desktop. I made this wallpaper on Procreate. I actually went through a lot of back and forth, decided on my wallpaper, but ultimately I decided to go with this one just because it felt the most me at the moment. I've actually been thinking about sharing some of the wallpapers I've created over the past year, so do let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Now, on the left, I have widgets. Not gonna lie, it's definitely been a bit of a love-hate situation. Widgets are one of those things I genuinely want to love. I definitely see the potential, but I feel like there could be more. So now, I just have five widgets. You can definitely add more, and to do so, you just have to right-click on your desktop, edit widgets and you can choose from any of these app widgets i've seen other people add clocks or pictures but personally i value functionality more so i keep it to a minimum just because it can get overwhelming and cluttered easily on top i have a calendar widget which is probably my favorite because it shows me my time block schedule for the day and for the next three days this makes planning my day so much easier because i can see at first glance whether i have an important deadline or event coming up next i I have the reminders app which keeps all my pending tasks and this is great because every time I open my laptop I can instantly see tasks that I need to accomplish as soon as I can. Kind of a bummer though because there's no option to add a task directly on here every time I do have to add a task it still opens the reminders app and this also applies to all your other widgets so again another limitation of widgets. Beside that is the notes app and I've created a folder within the app for my inbox which is basically a place to quickly jot down ideas. Next I I have my habit tracking app done which is actually a phone widget this isn't available on the built-in macbook widget so to access these you can go to your settings go to desktop and dock scroll down to widgets and then just enable iphone widgets so now you're not just limited to what's normally available on just your mac lastly i have my notion widget this probably isn't a surprise anymore but this basically shows me my favorite pages which are my personal life dashboard my academic dashboard and my work slash content dashboard by the way i have an in-depth notion tutorial a few videos back so if you want to learn about notion feel free to watch that now you can customize this widget and all your other widgets but for this one you can customize it to show either a specific page from your workspace your recently accessed pages or your pinned pages similar to mine aside from these you can also add the widgets in your notification center which you can see when you click the date and time on the top right corner of your screen so the way i separate the widgets on my desktop and those on my notification center is based on how often i use them those on my desktop are the ones i frequently need to see those in my notification center on the other hand or the widgets I don't need all of the time but that I still need to check in from time to time. They're basically out of sight until I actually need them. So I have the world clock. I also have a battery widget for all of my connected devices. There's also a month view calendar and a weather calendar. Now let's talk about my dock. When you first get your MacBook, there's usually a lot of apps on here and you won't probably need all of them for your day-to-day -day activities. So usually one of the first few things I do when I set up my MacBook is removing all of the apps I don't need from my dock and only keeping the ones I do use often. To do so, you can just right click on an app options and you can choose to either remove from the dock or keep in the dock. Let's quickly go through the apps I have on here. I have Finder which is the built-in folder app for Mac and this I use only for content creation files. When I was still studying, I rarely use this for storing academic files. If I did, it was probably just as temporary storage because academic files take up so much space. I'd rather store them in my Google Drive so I can sync them and access them on any of my devices and I'd also rather use my laptop storage for video files and also for video editing. I have day one, my beloved journaling app, Anki, which is a flashcard app. Highly, highly recommend for any student learning huge volumes of information. I also have a thorough tutorial on this if you want to learn about Anki. Notion, need I say more? The next ones are reminders, calendar, and notes, all of which I have mentioned a while ago. I also have the photos app. Next is Google Chrome, which is my default browser. Apple has its own browser, Safari, but I find the feature 
features and tools within Google Chrome to be far superior. I have yet to be convinced in switching to Safari. The last ones on here are Spotify and the Settings app. Speaking of settings, there are actually a few dock settings you can tweak. So if you go to Desktop and Dock, you can change the size. I prefer my dock to be smaller so I can maximize the vertical space more, especially when I'm using my browser or when I'm editing. Alternatively though, you can hide your dock and this will basically only show once you hover over the side of your screen. You also have the option to position your dock on any side, but I prefer keeping my dock on here just because it's much more intuitive. Magnification is also on. I disabled suggested in recent apps on my dock because I find it too cluttered for my liking. Within this tab, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can also set up hot corners for your desktop. Hot corners let you set up different actions for the different corners of your screen. So as you can see, if I move my mouse to the bottom right corner, I can create a quick note. Of course, there may be some instances when you will accidentally hover over a corner of your screen, not necessarily for the purpose of creating a quick note. To avoid triggering that action, you can add a modifier key. So if you click on this menu, click on option, control, or command on your keyboard, you can set up the actions to trigger once you only click these modifiers on your keyboard if that makes sense. Now, let's talk about the menu bar in the control center, which you can find on the topmost part of your screen. To be honest, I rarely use this control center unless it's for AirDrop or Bluetooth purposes, but you can also customize what's displayed here and on the menu bar. These are the ones I currently have. Again, I keep it to a minimum just because I don't want to clutter my desktop space too much. Although, as you can see, there are other options or modules that you can add. I highly, highly recommend getting the app Ice because it provides organized organization tools for your menu bar other than the ones already on here. What does it do specifically? So some apps offer a little menu bar shortcut so you can quickly access a few of their tools without opening the entire app. For example, when I click on Notion right here, I can search across my entire workspace. Though the downside is it's easy for the menu bar to get a bit crowded, especially if you have too many apps running. Using eyes though, you can choose which apps appear hidden and which stay visible within the menu bar. So if you hover over the dot icon on your menu bar, only then will all of the apps running in the background appear. You can also customize the menu bar appearance itself, which I find really, really interesting. You can add a tint, for example. You can even change the shape of the menu bar. I personally like split mode, which I find very sleek and unique. So it's definitely something worth having. Now that we've covered everything that you can customize on your desktop, let's go over the system settings that you can fine tune to keep everything personalized. So on the appearance, tab, you can switch between light or dark mode. You can change the accent and highlight colors, and this also applies to all your other apps. For example, in Anki, as you can see, anything that's interactive has the same accent color. If you highlight anything on your Notes app, it'll have the same highlight color. On the Displays tab, you can change the text size. I prefer keeping mine on default because my eyesight's already bad enough to even change it to a smaller size. I also don't want anything larger because, see, if I change it to just one size above. That is such a massive difference. Within this tab, you can also enable night shift, which essentially changes your screen color to look warmer at night. So you can turn it on, schedule it for the next day, and that's pretty much it. If you want more control and customization, you can try flux instead. And this will allow you to change how warm the screen will look and even set it to change at specific times throughout the day. Moving on to screensaver. There have been a lot of updates with the built-in MacBook screensaver, so you can definitely choose from any of them. I downloaded mine online and have all the relevant links in the description below so you can also use them. This one's the retro anime clock and I just love it because I think it's very fitting to my vibe right now. Alrighty, now that the system is all set up, let's talk about the apps I've been loving lately other than the ones on my dock. First is Hand Mirror. It just sits on your menu bar, an easily accessible mirror whenever you need one. Next is Paste Pal, which keeps a running list of everything you've recently copied, whether that be text, links, or even photos. This is particularly helpful when you're writing papers because usually your laptop only remembers the last thing you copied and you'll be surprised by how often you need something you copied say 20 minutes ago and completely forgot about. Next is Look Away. So as the name suggests, the app reminds you to look away from your screen. It just blocks my screen, blocks me from further working on my laptop so I can rest my eyes for a little bit. Next is Dropover. Okay, so one thing that I think consumes so much time when organizing files is 
is having to switch between different folders just to copy different files and then paste them onto another folder. Drop over though makes this so much easier. So instead of having to switch from one folder to another, you just shake your cursor a little and a floating shelf appears. You can temporarily move your files on here, move your files from another folder, and simply move everything where you want them to be. Super handy, especially when you're organizing your maxed out laptop storage. And that is it for today's video. Let me know your current app faves in the comments and I'd be so, so happy to try them out. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and thank you so, so much for sticking around. I'll see you guys in my next one.